Hey everybody, we're back. It's almost the end of the week. Friday is coming. And if you're not working, well, lucky you. I hope you're enjoying the lockdown. If you are working, then hopefully you're getting some respite right now and uh, some games coding. It's a nice bit of respite. All right, so a few changes on the channel today. Uh, let's turn this down a bit. Oh, yeah. Young Carts in the house. Thank you, Young Carts, for your intro, as usual. Cracking track. So, we got uh, a rebrand going on. Not quite there yet, but uh, just working on just giving the channel a little bit more interest. So, watch. Here we go. Boom. And we're in the house. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, an airlock opening and closing. So, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but the channel is now called Airlock Software, which is an old company I had back in the day um, when we, myself and a, a number of other guys, tried to crowdsource and create a computer game. So, I thought for this, might as well uh, bring back that brand just for the sake of the stream. So, let's see what we got today. Where are we at? So I wrote some stuff here. Actually, I ended up fixing it right at the end. Um, and uh, I'd just like to say a big shout out to Angel for watching the stream. Um, you are the first person to have watched and commented on one of the streams. Uh, and I appreciate you uh, saying that it was a good tutorial. I feel like I'm fumbling around in the dark. So uh, if you're learning something with me, then I'm very happy to hear it. And thanks so much for your support. So, um, yeah, we got buttons working, which was really nice. And we've got buttons in our lift. So we'll just do a quick, uh, quick demo. We'll launch the app. Switch to uh, full screen mode. Oh, still got that camera there. I'm going to have to turn that off and delete it permanently. Let's see. Um, there it is. I'll just delete that. I think I just wanted some kind of um, additional something on the screen. Uh, I don't know why I didn't just do it like a, I mean, a design. I've, it looks like I've purposely designed the screen to be a non-normal width. I'm, I have no idea why. What have I set it to? Uh, display settings. Window. 800 by 600. I, pff, honestly, I'm, I don't even remember doing that. Maybe back in the early, early streams. Um, but yeah, I would have probably done it at 1080p or something. Anyway. Um doesn't matter it's all because this is all temporary um we're, what we're doing is we're creating a framework for the game uh ensuring all the code behind it works and then we can worry about um 
putting the buttons where we want them and making it styled and, and looking nice. So uh, just a quick demo, if you haven't seen where we're at at the moment. So it is an audio adventure game. So uh, it's not an audio book. Uh, you are able to move around from location to location. So uh, we have a background audio, which you can hear right now, which is the, the hum. I'll just turn the audio up a little bit. Listen to that bass. There it goes. And I'll just turn the music off. And uh, so we've got items we can interact with. So we can turn on the TV. Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. This is so Mark in this room, we have a TV. Um, we're going to turn off the TV. Um, when we change to different locations, we have uh, audio that represents us leaving this location and audio that represents us arriving at the new location. So if we enter the lift, um, because we're in this uh, world that the writer is creating, we're in this living area on Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. We enter the lift, we're going to leave, you're going to hear the footsteps, then they're going to go into the lift, and the doors are going to shut, and we should be ready to pick a floor. So let's do that. I entered the elevator. So we're in the lift. We had a narrator talking, saying what was going on. So we want to get a voice actor and get some nice narration that sort of talks you through the game, helps drive the storyline, um, whilst the player will also talk and say things. So we want, so, well, we're looking at having two possible potential characters. Uh, so we're on the left, we're in the left, and this is what we got working yesterday. Uh, two buttons in our left, so we've got button one for the living quarters. Well, that's where we are already, we're on floor one. So we'll press it. Nothing happened. We're already on this floor. Technically, the lift doors should open, but um, who, ne who needs that? So let's go to floor two. And now the doors are open. We can step into the R&D lab or we can go back to floor one. So let's step into the R&D labs. Stepping into the R&D department, I could see Brian was using the photocopier and Sue was pouring herself a cup of coffee. Smelt of lunch. So we are in the R&D labs. There's nothing to do here yet. There's no characters, there's no options, there's nothing. We can just go back in the lift. Um, but we, what we were trying to do here is solve a problem uh, that the writer wanted us to in introduce and that was to be able to go to an area where you can't leave uh so thus forcing the player to engage in a puzzle in some way some way so here we're trying to go back in the lift these smells are making me hungry i'm not leaving yet i'm gonna go see what's cooking so he wants to go <laughs> go and eat so very exciting um not a lot there if i if i restart the game i woke up my mouth was dry i think i left the heating on um there we go of course, we've got other things we could do. We can go to the study, go back into the living area, go to the balcony. We've got no images here yet. Um, we've got a family photo we can look at. Of my mum, she was eight months pregnant with me. An awful, awful uh, voice acting from me. Uh, if you want really bad, of course, is the worst one. When I was a kid, I wanted to visit Earth, but after the death of my father, <laughs> I wasn't interested in going home. Home was Europa. My path was to continue my parents' journey in the field of science. If I have to hear that one more time, I'm going to have to delete it. Um, so if we want to look at that magazine again, we now we've got the option to read another article. Nah, I've already read every article. I've even done a crossword. So we can create narrative. We can give objects that you can interact with. We can create uh, logic around those objects. So doing things with those objects make you go up and down a lift allow you to trigger narrative move you to different locations um, and one of the next things we need to do with objects is be able to take them pick them up and use them elsewhere um, I'm not sure yet how you'd use them with something but uh, we'll get to that um, so one of the other key things we want to do next is create a character so we're not there yet so let's get down to business so let's see where we're at at the moment. So uh, we got ourselves a bit of a technical breakthrough at the end of the last last one. Uh, I'm going to switch to the live scene here. There we go. Um, so yeah, we were trying to create. We were trying to solve this problem. We wrote all this that we'd created an oath path for objects to link them to a given exit. Um, so just to recap on how that issue uh, manifested itself. Uh, in our 
scene here, we have these objects. We have locations, exits, and objects. Uh, and one of the things we wanted with the exit is for the exit to have a target location. So you can just click it and say where that exit is going to lead you. Uh, it'd be great if you could filter this automatically by location. Um, so only these these scenes would uh, would show up. Can you do that? I wonder if you can just type in like res colon forward forward slash scene forward slash location dot tscn. Nope. No. So it just gives us more. Um, so that's this is really useful because we can just you know I want this exit to take me to R and D. I just drag it over, right? Um, so. The problem is that when we pick a node here, we're not actually saving the node. You can see in the pop-up, we're just saving the path to the node. Uh, so that's dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash study, for example. So what we wanted was to create a simple way of just referencing where something was going to go. So you could drag it in here, uh, and later on in the code, you wouldn't have to work out what that path was relative to where you are in the scene. Because if we try and call dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash study and we're down in the elevator living area uh it just doesn't work it never works so the breakthrough we had yesterday we switched to our coding scene i'm going to be switching scenes a lot at the moment um is we have uh let's see where was it was it object yes it was so you can see we with an object we have a target exit so that is uh, an object that can take you to a location. But when the node is loaded, the on ready, we set that target exit to be target exit node. So now anywhere else in the game, we can just reference target exit node and we could do stuff with that object. We can say target exit node dot item. Is it true? Target exit node dot button text. Uh, what was the text in there? We can do everything rather than spending ages trying to find that target exit node through a node path depending where we are so we ended up spending about an hour and a half creating searches and all sorts of different means to try and find it when all we needed to do is this so back to the live scene so one of the things we want to do though uh is so we said, we got it. We learned that using onready can link to an exported node path, thus making loading and passing nodes later easy. No more messing around with working out relative absolute node paths. So let's fix any workarounds we have in place and simplify our code. So previously, I've been doing this. I've been extracting the node. So I get a node path. <laughs> I then uh, get the name that's inside the node path, uh, and I have to get, I have to get the last element of the path and return it back. So an extract node gives me just the node in the node, and then I have to go through the tree and find that blooming node. Excuse me. So what we need to do is find out where else we're using that script and fix it. So let's do that now. And uh, big hello to whoever's uh, in the chat. I haven't been looking at the chat, so if you've said something, I haven't seen it. But uh, hey, so um, let's have a look now. So player has current location. I think that's going to be the big one. Um, we can see previous location and current location are both node paths. Current previous location is just a copy of current location. So um, we can see already down here that just when we use an exit, we have to save off our past location, set the current location to the target location, resave the target location as extract node exit target location, and then create a new location based on the target location that we just created by finding the node where the target location is. So we could do all this in one line. If location, where's our location script? Uh, if location does the same thing 
up here. So let's do that. Super easy peasy, right? So let's just copy the script from our, uh, where did we do it? Object. And we shall call it. Uh, where is it? Wait a minute. I'm speaking rubbish. I'm talking about an exit, aren't I? Yeah. So it's the, it's the exit target location we're talking about here. So it's the exit script. Not the, not the location. Exit, here we go. So there's the target location up there. So we can just say uh, target location node equals get node target location. Happy? Happy. That is going to be one time saving useful tip uh, moving forward the development here. So now we've got to rewrite this script to utilize this. Let's first of all, just make sure it plays and works. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Hello, America. I'm Seems Martin to be good. I entered the elevator. Okay. You know what I'd like is a global... Um, this is our global script. I'm just going to create a var. Narrative. Uh, var. Play. No, you know what? Export. Var. Play. Narrative. Equals false. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, I'll just leave it like that. But, uh, ooh, I need to set it as a bool, right? Do I do that there? Nope. Where do I do it? Uh, do it there. Export bool var. Export bool var play narrative. Right, so we're saying play narrative is uh, true or false. Oh, yeah, like that. Cool. So now I should be able to... Oh, there is no scene for global, so I need to say whether it's true or false, so there's no point exporting it. Var play narrative equals false. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm sick of hearing myself say, I woke, I woke up. up. My mouth, My was, mouth dry. was dry. I think I left the heating on. Um, I'm going to turn off the narrative so we can just not listen to me say anything. Um, what I need to, though, differentiate between is the player talking and the narrative talking. And so later on in our audio controller, we're going to need to create something other than um, play narrative, cue narration. We want cue uh, player talking, which will be very similar with a different speaker. So... Uh, I'm going to actually add that to my to-do list. So we want to add a, a player narrative uh, audio stream and functions for playing, for queuing. We also need to create some sort of queue for our audio. Um, oh, excuse me, got itchy back there. Wow, burst open our machine. Okay, so uh, this is really about, it's just for the purposes of debugging here. Uh, not really debugging, but just making my life a little bit quieter. Um, let's see, location. Where's it going to be? It's probably going to be... An audio controller. Yeah, so we're only going to play narrative. Q narrative. There we go. If uh, global dot play narrative equals false, return. I think this function returns. No, it doesn't return anything. No, just return. We go so no more narrative ah that's great now i just need to reduce this volume on those footsteps um so he'll just go around the place minding his own business 
changing floors and so on. Um, watching TV and so on. And you won't even be able to view anything anymore. Um, well, it'd be nice if it still showed it on the screen. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Let's do that. So play narrative will work, but we'll only do... We'll only play the audio if that's set to true. So audio file, let me... Da, 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 da. Yeah, so we'll queue up everything. Uh, Let me just do this. If it's true, then go ahead and play it. If it's true, then go ahead and play it. So now we're doing, we're going basically, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's try that. So now we should better just uh, look at the family photo. Yeah. Get the magazine on the coffee table. Yeah. Get it again. Nah. Ooh. Is it ever going to disappear now? Oh, it does. Um, one of the things we also do is we set, we play stuff based on the length of the audio. That's interesting. I wonder why that first thing, the first text disappeared so quick, because that was quite a long audio file. Bug found. We do need to start logging bugs at some point. I'm going to add that to our to-do list. Um, choose place to start logging bugs because um, we need to if we're going to do this properly then uh, we need to keep track of these bugs at the moment we're sticking them at the end of this document so we've got a little um, we've got an error here um, so there's actually the end of the one so sometimes audio length not triggering Oh, uh, returning correctly and uh, text on screen fades out prematurely and the other one we had was that um, this is a great one if we got this and the left leave the left and the left leave the left and the left leave the left That lift door gets a bit confused, or we go into the left, into the living area, into the left, in the living area, left, in the living area, and the left. No lift music, right? Because what's happening there is we're because we're changing locations so fast. Um, we've got this function for cross fading from one location to the next, the audio in each location. So what's happening is we're going like this, uh, 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 and we're stuck in the middle now. We're not crossfaded either way, so both the channels are too too quiet to be to be heard. I think they are playing, but they'll be at like minus seventy decibels or something. So, um, if I just go to another location now, that should work. We've got to let the crossfade finish. Go back in there, and the music should come back. So, um, so the uh, location audio transition must complete before buttons can be clicked. Yeah, we need to limit the controls. When you move from a location, we need to kind of have this process where we lock down the controls, and then when the process is completed, we allow the controls again. And the same was going to go for interacting with objects, um, having dialogues with characters. We've always got to have control over the interface and stop the player from uh, breaking it, essentially. So... Uh, so we have, we're going to work on the exit and player script. So I'm just going to close all other tabs. I'm going to focus on the player. I'm going to switch to the coding screen so you can see all the beautiful code. All right. I hope that's big enough for you. If it's not, um, and I remember Angel said, can I make it bigger? Hopefully that's bigger. Um, I'm actually render um, my desktop resolutions at 2K here, so um, I hope that's good enough. I don't know if there's any sort of editor settings for making things bigger on the screen here. Theme. Maybe I could change my color theme to something a bit more 
Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other color themes here for you for using highlighting, denting. Oh, no. A size? No, that's the indent. Um, appearance. Um, help font size? No good. Still editors. At some point, I'd like to switch and start using uh, Visual Code, my favorite. We'll be watching something about that. Um, later on in this video, we're going to be having a little bit of fun. I think we're going to uh, jump onto uh, Fiverr and we're going to find some voice actors who are interested in helping out the project. Um, just for a laugh. Um, add a little bit of pizzang to what we have at the moment. Let's see what we got. I just can't wait to get some dialogue from uh, Steph. She's quite good at writing. She, uh, well, she's amazing at writing, but she's quite good at like the subtle humor that she brings into the to the writing. I'm hoping we can have some of that in this. Oh, I have certainly changed something there. Look at that. Oh, oh, I'm not a fan of that color scheme. What have I done? Oh no, please, no. It's it's hideous. Oh my goodness. Uh, that must be that theme setting. Theme. Default. Oh no, it's too late. Whatever I've done, I've, I've messed it. Mm. Um, where was it? It was text editor theme, wasn't it? Yep. I just reset here. There we go. Adaptive. Oh, there we go. Phew. Yeah, I like these colors. I'm so used to them now. Right. So we've got our exit object. We've just added target location node. So we don't need to get uh, this target location anymore. So back into the player function. We pass it an exit. The exit is pointing to a target location. So um, there's two things we might want to do here. One is change these. Oh, no, they still need to be node paths. That's okay. Um, but the previous location is now going to become a node object, right? As soon as we make this change, that's going to be a node object. So node object reference. All right. So let's assume that current location... Um, mm. let's not let's keep that as it is <laughs> node path right okay so it's just this target location we want so target location should just equal exit dot target location node right should be all we need to do um, of course, we're deriving. We don't use target location anywhere else, right? Apart from there. Do a little search. Nope, just there, right? So, um, so maybe we replace n uh, location node with target location. Just ditch all that. Right. Yep, yeah, I think so. I think that would just make this easier to read, right? Yeah. So we should be back where we started. We've saved ourselves a line of code, but we've hopefully made this a little bit easier because we don't want to rely on that awful global um, path stuff that we're doing before. So let's try that. 
way. And to the left. I enter the lift. Go to floor two. We're on floor two. I need to fix that spelling mistake. Exit the lift into research and... So that's going to be in the elevator here. And in uh, this exit here... Nope, it's this one. Enter R&D. So we'll just be on the text here, on the button. Development. Is it nice? You can just find it all here. Let's get rid of the uppercase stuff here. Super. All right. Problem solved. Uh, what's this? Parameter P node is null. Uh, is that gone now? Let's just hit a quick play. I introduced a new error, have we? 4 2. No, nope, all beautiful. We're still printing out this debug stuff. We need to take the user to this node path. Um, I think that's in player, which is where we are. Nope, it's not. Where are we doing that? Must be in the game script. There it is. So we can get rid of this stuff now. I'll keep it in. Just comment it out. Just debug. Um, actually, you know what? No, don't need it. Don't need it. Don't need that. So take user to through exit. Update the GUI. Cool. All right. Is there an easier way of updating the GUI? I think there is. I think we should create, this is where our global comes in handy, just for creating convenient helper functions. I can't wait to delete that one. Um, but update GUI. Right. I think we can do that. Paste it in there. All right. Cool. And now, instead of doing this get tree, get current scene and all that, I can just say global. Yes. And over here, same thing. Global. Excellent. And let's create uh, a new one. Helper methods, functions, whatever you want to call them. Global to update GUI. Updates the GUI. Useful if you change locations, button names, etc. as it redraws the screen. Right? Look at all these now. We can change the verb. So we can change what you can do with an object. We could, we could open the drawer and then that'll be uh, search the draw and it could be uh, take stapler um, and then close the drawer so we can have multiple verb changes we can add verbs so if we've opened the drawer we could take the stapler or we could close the drawer again um, and we can remove verbs so we've got some object interaction stuff there and we've got audio controllers we can change the background audio where we are so for example, we're using that for the TV, turning on the TV, turning off the TV. We can cue narration and we can play sound effects. Uh, if you didn't notice, just listen to the sound effect of this magazine. Ooh, what a lovely magazine. I do wonder why that first one's so fast, though. The rest seem to be... Oh, no. Interesting. Anyway. Right. And we've got this could not find audio file. I'll need to fix that as well. It's where we haven't got one defined, so... Um, do we actually... Yeah, we do spit that out in the audio controller. It's an easy one to fix. Let's just quickly fix that. Um, it's useful to have that, but th what we're doing is we're not passing in any sound to load. 
So we need if sound to load equals null or sound to load equals an empty string return. So we shouldn't get that anymore. Hello America, I'm Mark Levine. Liberty. Liberty. Nope. Liberty. Fabulous. Um, and what I'd like to do now is we've made a few tweaks. We'll say uh, minor enhancements. What did we do? We've fixed the spelling error. We've uh, changed the, uh, we've added a node reference target location node reference to the exit object and we have uh, removed some error prints um, cool oh yeah and we've added a, a play narrative option and global options. All right. Oh, God, my back is itchy today. What's going on? Trying not to itch on live stream. Now I'm itching all over to so the thought. Don't itch. Have a drink instead. All right. Sorry, I'm on the wrong scene there. Right, so that's committed, updated those changes. Um, do we use this function anywhere anymore? Do I want to get rid of it? I, th I think it's quite useful now I've written it actually. I'm thinking, you know, I spent a long time on that tiny little function. Maybe I'll need it at some point. Um, I'm just hoping I'm not using it anywhere because I, I don't, don't really want to be using it. Extract node. Um, yeah, player, get current location node. Yeah, we are doing this, goodness sake. So, so all these four functions are returning back a node, right? Seem to work though. Locations seem to have no problem because they're um, all the locations are children of the main tree. Um, it's just everything else was harder to find without slow searches. But at 10 errors in the debugger. What's this? Node not found. Hmm. Let's just clear those out and see where that's triggering. Oh, straight away, apparently. Hmm. Um. C++ error, condition node is true, return to null. Wonder where that's triggering. Looks like it's triggering on the ready function. Object, right, okay. So object line 12. Oh, ah, right. You know what? It's because um, we've got a load of exits that don't have target nodes. So how can we do that? Um, we don't always want to have it. So we want a uh, Godot on ready condition. Uh, this always comes up. Can I just hide this? Now that condition connected is true. Is that what I've got as well? Oh, node is true. Except I've worked out what it is. So 
have a look at your stack trace, maybe. Mister. Um, well, loops reset themselves. Complete conditions. Ready. Um. Hmm. Oh, here we go. I'm running into a problem where my parent will try to set text to some labels that are his children, but apparently they're not ready yet, which returns null instance and crashes the game. It doesn't crash in our case, but it still works. And it's a problem because I wrote the script on the trail and called it works. Apparently, it works. A not ready instance and a null instance are different things. You can set variables even before adding an instance to the scene, so being ready or not isn't a problem. Yeah, can I not just move that uh, into the onReady function then? The ready function. Will that not do exactly the same thing? So uh, we can say var target exit node. And then over here, we can say uh, uh, self.target exit node equals get node target exit. But only if uh target exit not equal to null and target exit not equal to nothing just double checking this i'm not sure exactly which syntax is correct there maybe i should check right so i should do the same thing but we won't get these errors anymore right it's only going to set it up if it exists. Let's try it. Play. Hello. No more errors. Happy days. Can we go in the lift? Yes, we can. Can we interact? Oops. Turn off. Turn on. No. Let's try again. On. Hello, America. I'm Mark yep. Levin. Turn off. I think that's just again a timing issue, right? Go. Cool. Um. Fabulous. All right. So, what's next? Um, maybe I should do that on the others as well, but. An exit should always have a target location, so I don't, shouldn't need to do that there. Um, but I think it's probably good sense. So if target exit is set for an object, then get the node. <clears throat> Crap here. Um, okay. And where else was I going to do it? Um, so I'm just going to copy that and put it into. Yeah. So if target location is set for an exit, get the node. So that's target location, target location, and target location node equals target location. Again, there should be no problem with that. Just move to, oh, oh, double declaring that. Let's get rid of that. Uh, we don't need that anymore either. Oh. oh, we do need it. Um, we need to declare it like so. Cool. There we go. Hello, 
America, I'm Mark. All right, happy days. All right. Okay, so next up, um, let's have a look at what we've got left on the list. Do we have we sorted any of these out? No. Uh, we have fixed a few little errors there, so fixed um, on ready. Um, node, uh, get nodes. And, yeah, that's fine. All right, I think that was our major goal for this uh, stream, was really addressing that issue there. And we've solved it. Um, I really, I, you know what I can't wait to do? I'm really keen. I've been thinking about this each day. Uh, is turning this into an RPG. I think um, if we, so this is what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to create a little ideas bot here. So I'm thinking we can have a set of a random locations. For example, set one forest locations would be uh, opening, uh, thick woods, uh, slight path, clear path, uh, clearing. Um, what else would you get in the woods? Uh, Fallen tree. <laughs> Maybe not. Is that would be a location? Anyway, um, so you, what I'd like is to, you know, maybe there's a hill. Maybe there's a, a just different, describe different locations within this forest, right? Um, so that would be a set. Then what we can do is we can have uh, utilize random uh, locations from within the set, yeah? And then trigger random uh, events within the set. So we could introduce um, roguelike. So introduce roguelike elements into areas of the game. So what we could be doing is we could be creating an audio adventure that has periods of roguelike uh, dungeons that you explore. Um, we could actually have real dungeons. We could have locations. We could map it all out and have you explore it. You know, old school, you'd be like writing down where you are and maybe we could even have a map so you don't need to do that. Um, but we can, of course, well, one of the things we want is to have characters in it. And so you could be pursued. We could have a uh, space within a scene uh, and the audio could be that the enemy's getting closer to you, and so you're running from them. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Uh, and eventually, you might want to interact and attack that character. So our interaction might be the character, um, and rather than having a dialogue, we're going to attack with whatever. We can utilize weapons. We could utilize, um, you know, guns, or I don't know what our sci science fiction weapons are going to be, but we could create, you know, we want to allow to create any game. We want you to be able to pull out a sword and attack someone, and pull out your bow and arrow and have a shot. Um, so it gives us the opportunity to create potentially some kind of either turn-based or real-time, I like the idea of real-time, uh, roguelike elements um, by creating, you know, well, you don't actually have to have uh, a forest. We could have an enemy in the R&D department and, you know, attack him. So, just thought something to come later, but the first thing we want to do is facilitate story. Um, this is this isn't an audio book, but it is still an audio adventure, and so our adventure must have some kind of narrative and drive, intrigue, um, puzzle. Uh, oh, it's not. I don't like to think of it as puzzles, to be honest. 
Um, I'd be really thinking about how the puzzle elements should work, wondering if we should have, uh, we really should have like listening for a number and then typing it into a keypad. Um, I'd rather, you know, you find, you know, smash it and find a, a key card on the back and then use the key card to swipe or, you know, something more, um, something that works within, without us having to create new user interface elements that are going to become awkward to use, however they will or not. Anyway, um, so something to come back to. Uh, allow, uh, introduce enemies, attack with different uh, verbs for attack. Use sword, use bow and arrow, use laser gun, <laughs> laser gun. Um, so that means enemies have health or HP, statistics. You know, we could really introduce like uh, some in-depth role-playing elements. I, I know just the person that likes that sort of thing. Um, so that would be cool. I like the idea of starting out very slow and then, you know, you might bludgeon someone to death early. And I, why do we have to bludgeon everyone to death? There's a great game. Um, this guy I know, Callum, who hopefully is going to come and help us with the user interface at some point, sooner rather than later. It's been a while. Um, but he, he bought it for me. I can't remember what it's called, but it's all about not killing. You have to do your best not to kill people in it. Um, anyway, right. So it's 10 to 10. I don't want to drag this one over an hour because we've nailed a couple of things we want to do right now. Um... Let's just start, uh, let's start a audio log real quick. How is that going to work? Where is the audio log? How is it done? Um, can we make it part of the player? Is it one big string? Is it a list of strings? How should an audio log work? If you play the same narrative over and over again, should you see the entire narrative playing over and over again? Or should you see the key elements that were said? I think it's unique elements only. So maybe against the player. Oh, doggy wants, doggy wants attention. Um, Spell queuing, right? Mm. How should we do it? What we could do is we could have a user interface element that's hidden for the full screen. And you press it and it just shows you a scrolling list of all the uh, of all the audio that's been said. Don't just want don't want to develop out the uh, user interface too much at this point. Um, but it'd be good to just start storing it. What's the best place to store it in? Player doesn't seem right. I feel like we need to some sort of narration. Um, or maybe it's just text content within a. Um, okay, let's just see if anyone else has done it. Kado, audio log. Looking at Kado, looking at audio, live streaming intro session. Oh, GD Quest. Cool. I didn't know they did that. And now I'm going to have to check that out. Let me put that on my watch list. Uh, uh, save. Watch later. Fabulous. 
Um, that. Wow, can I save that into my playlist? Look at that. Cool. Definitely do that. Come on, Bonds. Come on in. Up here. Come on. We're just finishing the stream. Come say hello. Come on then. Oh, mister. What's the matter? Hmm? I want to say hello to everybody. Oh. Ah. Who's that? Who's that? It's you. What is going on there, eh? Hmm? Come in then. You're going to sit here and be a good boy. There you go. Don't sit on the keyboard, though. Right. So... I guess what I'm concerned about here is how long the log's going to be. It could be huge, but then there's nothing wrong with that. What sort of information do we want to store in the log? Where you were when the audio was played? Uh, who said what? And what was said? So, who said it and what was said? So, location, character or narrator or player, and text. All right, let's give it a try, real quick. I'm going to put it in global. Will I put it in global? Would I put it in audio controller? Oof, I don't know where to put it. Maybe it's just game. Put it in game. It's like core, my tree. Whoop. Oh no, it's hand licking time. Audio, okay, thanks, Bonds. Audio log equals an empty string. All right, so game dot audio underscore log. We are ready to rock. So now, whenever we pass in narration, we're going to add to our audio log. So um, actually, our audio log is going to be a list of arrays, and it's going to be a list of... Um, Gonna be a dictionary, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, how do we do that again? Is it like this, where we put in our key pairs, key, colon, click, 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 value. Is that right? Comma, and then another one. Bonds. Oh my God, the licking. Thanks. Thank you so much. You're a good licker. Yeah. Oh, chocolate key. Oh, yeah, of course it's not that. So um, let's say, what should we have once? Um, because we can now look for duplicate keys, right? And make sure each one's unique. So we'll have, um, we'll have location. Um, we'll have, um, who said it? So, uh, what should we call it? Announcer? If that's the right word. And then text. And whatever that was said, right? So we have an array of those, and we just add them over and over again. So let's try that. I'm not quite sure how we save this. But, um, so... Is it Aragon now? Yeah, I think so. Let's hit play to make sure it works. Yep. Okay, so we're going to update this in the audio controller. So whenever we create narrative, if we play narrative, where is it? Hello? Hello. How are you doing? Hmm? Oh, look at this big hit. Hey. Oh, he's a good boy. Yes, he is. Um, yeah, so Q narration. We have got text being played here. Don't know where we are, but hopefully we can look that out. We've got the current location or player reference. Yeah, we've got a reference to player, which means we've got a reference to current location. So, uh, Q narration, text. So, we check to see if any text exists. Oh, 
And we actually save out the text regardless of whether there's any or not. Oh, that's okay. So right here, we're going to not hopefully get our hands licked. <laughs> Update audio log. Ah, audio lob. Yeah, we could have this stage in the game where you have to stop the dog from touching, licking your hands every time you type. Yeah, you could have a doggy that licks your hands when you try and press a button. Ah, right. So uh, that's going to be game dollar game dot. Is that right? Yeah. Happy with that, Mister? So we can say location equals. Let's just do a little test here, make sure it actually works. Oh my god, the licks. Oh, they're full on licking. Full on dripping hands. Perfect. Thank you, Bonds. Alright. Uh, no, it doesn't like. Uh, no instance of any type of ray. Uh, yeah, so dollar game doesn't work. Where are we? Audio controller. Audio controller isn't actually. Oh, it is a node. Oh, uh, get parent, right? So we're in. Oh, for goodness' sake! Let's just set it up here. We're going to. We're going to get a reference to it. Game equals. Uh, is that right? Okay, current scene. Let's just see if that works. Okay. Do, 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 do. Boop, 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 boop. Game to audio log. Happy? Play. Oh, still not working. Um. So it's just get current scene. Is that just going to give me root? We got it. We got there. So now we want to inspect game log. So we should have it here. So game. Here it is. Game. Audio log. Array size one. Open it up. And we have doof, 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 and doof, doof. Perfect. It worked, Bonnie. It worked. So, next up, you know what? I'm just going to let Bonnie do the streaming. Go on, Bonnie. Go stream. Go on, do the typing. Oh. He's going to get lower down. I'm just hoping he's going to... You know what? I'm going to turn him around, and he won't lick my hand when I type. There you go. Go this side. Yeah? So... Uh, we're going to print player dot... And we want to get current location, which is get current, oops, current, I can't even see now. Oh, he is definitely wanting to lick those hands again. Oh, yeah. You want to lick handies? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why are you licking my hands? Uh, hey, Steph, can we have fast travel to other locations when they're unlocked? Ooh, yeah. I, I, so I was saying earlier, we could have a map. Um, so you could jump to a, a, play, a location. Hey, while you're here, let me show you where we're at. Um, I'm just creating an audio log at the moment. I have to turn this off. Uh, that doesn't work. Let's just comment that out. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right, check this out. Are you ready? So, I don't know how, I can't remember how much uh, I showed you last time, but obviously we've got the TV screen that Hello, America, turns on Levin, and turns great. off. And we'll let you turn it on again, because it's annoying. I've got narration off at the moment, so I've got a little option in my global that lets me turn off the, having to listen to myself, read that article. It's more than I can bear. Um, so, I've just saved myself my sanity so um the major thing i've changed is so i've been developing the scripting 
uh, here's our game script. So we can create scripts now for objects. So I've created an object here of lift button, an object here of another lift button, and I've created the family photo, the object TV, I've got turn on and turn off the TV, I've got the magazine and so on. Uh, but the buttons in the lift, they were the main things because I wanted to be able to use an object and move somewhere. So if we enter the lift now, rather than the location here, we have to interact with the button within the lift. So we could have an emergency button here and talk to the operator. Um, so we go to the R. Oh no, if you press floor one, press, nothing happened. We're already on this floor. So we go to floor two. Where well, hey. So we still got the buttons. But now we're on floor two. So now we can go into R&D. And the next thing, this is a puzzle you gave me, a, a uh, something we needed to do as part of the storyline is to prevent players from leaving this exit, uh, leaving from an exit once they entered an area until they did something, right? So now I've um, got this. Blah, blah, not allowed to exit test. If the audio was on, it would tell you something about him being hungry. Um, so we won't let the player out. So we can create a condition where we allow the player to leave. Um, so in my game script now, uh, I have got exit scripts. So I've got exit scripts and object scripts. So now we can start creating story around where they, where the player moves and what the player interacts with. Um, so it's really simple. So I've got something called a pre-exit and a post-exit. So a pre-exit is something that happens before you leave. So in this case, we don't let them leave. We cue this audio, blah, blah, not allowed to leave. And then we return false, which means, nope, you ain't leaving. So we could do all sorts of stuff there. We could have a discussion with a character. We could have someone say, no, no, you're not, you're not getting out of here until you wear some bloody decent shoes. Uh, but with the post exit, that means they can arrive at the location. So in your, what you were saying is you'd like them to, doesn't matter what floor they go to, um, we want them to be told, you know what, you've got to do this first and get taken somewhere else. So now with a post exit, we could have this thing that says, uh, so we could set up a variable over here to say, you know, what act are we on? I want to act one, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll say, if you're still on act one and they go to any floor, then start playing this script, moving them, move them to this location, play this other script, have a dialogue, uh, and then update. Now we're on act two. So we'll never do it again. It only does it once. So we've got um, some really complicated potential here uh, that we can implement really quickly and start building story really, really fast. Um, I think, I don't know if I sent you an email earlier. I think I started writing one to you. I don't know if I hit the send button, but I was just saying that there's uh, so many people that want to want to um, voice act. I thought maybe we needed to have like a live stream audition session. My my mum called me last night. Uh, there's this 500, I think it's 500 uh, person choir on Zoom. So she's joined the choir and is now singing with 500 people on Zoom at once which is, uh, she's good. No, I didn't send the email, right? So I was just thinking we could do auditions, get all the players, I get all the <laughs> the people that want to audition and, uh, you know, you've got your script and we can go, all right, let's 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 try some people out and we can do some trials. I don't want to upset people though. I don't want to give anyone bad news. I just, you know, live stream audition, yes, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to be, you know, a Simon Cowell. No, get off, you rubbish. Um. So that uh, I do have a friend whose girlfriend has got an awesome voice. Uh, I've only ho heard her. I've never met her, but I've only heard her over his mic. But uh, she's got a solid pair of lungs. So uh, I was thinking we'll definitely have to get her in the auditions. I know she wants to audition, but uh, I said, uh, well, you're in charge of that. There's always man hash three four six <laughs> who's that <laughs> is that a, a discord username man three four six some rapper <laughs> i don't know who that is um 
tell me who that is. I don't know how fast this type stuff is and whether there's like a big lag between you typing and me seeing it. Oh, Bonnie's in massage mode. Um, anyone. Right, okay, yeah. Well, so what I was going to do is um, I thought it might be fun, funny to go on. If you write some dialogue, let's say uh, we, we go for some throwaway dialogue, like uh, maybe there is a... Um, like a computer that uh, maybe a nihilistic computer. No, that's been done before. Maybe some asshole computer. Um, anyone, anyone we don't want to upset, we can put them in a random man woman. Yeah, totally. Uh, you're right. Absolutely. Sometimes though, I, I've had it before. I'm not going to name any names, but I've done uh, voice auditions for certain games and the auditions were so bad it didn't matter how many times i said it even even like the short things you just didn't want to put it in that said i've got some cool um stuff like i mean and we can reach out to some of the guys that did uh some of the original audio check this out if i can get this one uh this is pretty cool this was like uh maybe you've heard it before let me just get him uh, VLC up. Uh, where is it? It's like a, a speech. Um, he's got a great voice. He was like, he played a senator in the original Hull Breach game. Uh, I've got these guys. I've got loads of them, to be honest. I've got so many different people. So there was a, a really famous horror writer. Uh, I think I mentioned him before, right? This guy, Scott Sigler. He's he does very well for himself. Uh he's got he's got some good horror horror novels. Contagious, Nocturnal, Earthcore, Ancestor. I've read a lot of them. Um, but I got him. <laughs> so he sounds a bit like this. Very American. Here we go with the second set of vocals. This time it's the gruff guy that you asked for. He loves doing yes, voice sir. service. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can't. I can't listen to it. It's. It's. it's All right, it's gentlemen. Good. Let's get started. Yeah. Our orders are in. The anyway, yeah. So I've got loads. I've got loads of guys that we could reach out for. Oh, Private Jones. This guy's. Uh, he's. He's not a. He's a bit wimpy. I think. Yes, sir. Yep. There. <laughs> God. Well, this is the one I was talking about. Final speech. Listen to this guy. Amazing. Sisters and brothers. Oh yeah. I stand here before you full in the knowledge that we are at a crossroads in our history. Yeah, he's got our an amazing left voice. Earth for a new, better life. Anyway, I mean, it'd be amazing when we've got good voices in here. Um, it'll make such a difference to the atmosphere and how it sounds. Uh, and Scott Sigler's probably doing too well to want to donate his, his voice to our, our game. But you never know. Maybe he's bored and he's sitting at home. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna have to let us know. You, you've got to drive that dialogue stuff. I, the next thing I want to do, um, because I've ticked off so many things on the on the list here now, um, is I really want to get into the uh player narrative. Uh, sorry, not the player narrative, the player. Uh, the, oh wow, have I not even got it on here? The dialogue. Talk to a character. I haven't even got talking to characters. Let's just put that on on here. Talking to characters. So that would be the Inkle engine. Um, so yeah, it, but it's coming on really well, Steph. Getting there. And this, I mean, there's already the potential to do a lot of the stuff we did. One of the things I really wanted to talk about though was puzzles um, and limiting the scope. So I'd really like to make sure that we work within um, within the realms of um, I just, you know, I, how do I explain this? I explained it better earlier. It, the, the thought of having a keypad on it, for example, uh, I, I just thought it just seems a little bit weird and uh, what i'd like to do is stick to a, a consistent way of um the user interface working so if we need to have so the example was this um 
Oh, cool. You've done a dialogue for a bit. Excellent. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Um, so, for example, the key card, right, the key number, the pin code, rather than having you find the number and then go to a keypad and have to type in the keypad number, um, I thought that potentially what would what would be more consistent with the way we're doing the user interface would there be perhaps you like uh, smash the photo or you pick it up and accidentally drop it and a, a key card comes out or something like that and then you use the key card as the pass to get out or just changing the way the puzzles work such that they work within the realms of the way we are interacting with the game we could add you know safes and pin codes and mini games to it um but i think i think that might just be a bit gimmicky at the moment i'd like to try and avoid it if we can um and i don't know we'll see um so what we might have to do is i mean it does it shouldn't affect you too much in the way you, you create the puzzles uh and i think a, a lot of the way we should do this is we should uh we shouldn't plan out too much too far in advance we should work out like our first area plan it out uh play with it see what we get out of it and then um and then start writing act two and see how that you know learning using what we learned from the first act otherwise you're going to end up writing an entire book and <laughs> we're going to get too far ahead of ourselves and then you're going to go oh, i got to rewrite all that or i got to change all that and that's going to be frustrating so um i think we need to work with the creative process uh work together on a section and and take it from there so let's really develop out the this first uh area but what you've done already yeah uh, absolutely yeah this whole first area and all the puzzles within it and and the character and um dialogues and so on and then move it from there so but yeah it's uh it's coming on so it's nice to it's nice that you've popped in and said hello thanks it's getting lonely in here. <laughs> I think maybe my mum was watching earlier. I said, oh, feel free to say something in the chat. And then they disappeared. And I was like, yeah, it's probably my mum. <laughs> I gave her a link to it earlier. Um, so, right. So I'm going to do uh, this last tweak here. And that was to save the, um, the update the audio for the player. So we're gonna. So, um, what I was saying, Steph, is that I want to be able to look back at what was said in the story, and so when you look back at the audio, the narration, we want to see where it was said, what location it was said in, uh, who said it. Was it the narrator? Was it the player? Uh, oh, brilliant! Nice. Okay. Awesome. Um, and what they said. I can't think of anything else. It doesn't really matter what time they said it or. Um, I think that's all we need to, to do. So the audio log should just keep adding logs. Um, so I want to just keep building it up every time uh, a file is played and it should be unique. So we don't want to, if they say, that, if they do something twice, it's not going to say it every time. Um, what we might also want to do is update this cue narration. Uh, actually, that would be good, wouldn't it? Let, why don't we just have like a save to log flag uh, equals false, right? Um, and so now, um, I think that should still work. Hello, America. Yep. I'm Mark Levin. This is so now what's going to happen is it'll cue narration, but unless we pass in the text, the audio, and the word true, then it's not going to save it to the... Um, to the dialogue log, the audio log. So, right. So last thing for tonight is to get these um, bits of text saving into the log. So the first thing I want to do is work out where location. So we're going to look at the player object. I've written some functions right at the bottom here. Get current location node. Uh, I want to get the current location object and then ask it what the name is. The name of the node is location name. So go back into the audio controller, get location object dot uh, location underscore name. 
So if I hit play there, you should see it printed out here, living area, perfect. So that will be our location. So that will always work automatically. Now, um, whenever we do anything in here, the announcer is always going to be the narrator. So if we have someone narrating, uh, what do you think of that, Steph? Uh, if we um, we have two voice actors, one is the narrator and one is the player. If you want some pure comedy, the player can start hearing the narrator later on and maybe thinking they're going mad. Um, but oh, there's a film about that, I think. I don't think I've seen it, but I know there is. Um, anyway, my point being that we can store information that the player says, we can store information that the narrator says, we can store information that characters say, and we can decide what's important. If we think it's important and worth logging, then we pass in this true flag and uh, it'll work. So the other thing is text. So we're going to pass in text. And that's it. That will always save. So now this Q narration um, in our game script, we can decide whether or not we want to save it or not. So, um, da, 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 da. right, it's a picture of me, a picture of my mum. She was eight months pregnant. I'm going to save that to the log. True. Uh, and then object TV, and we're going to save. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to visit Earth, so I'm going to save that one to the log as well. So pass in true. And now when I hit play, and I'm going to uh, look at the family photo. I'm going to enter the lift. I entered the lift. Go back into the living area, read the magazine, and I'm going to read the magazine again. And now, um, I want to, <laughs> oh God's sake. I want to debug. Can I do this live? I think I can. So I think I can go into the audio controller here and um, I've got an empty print statement there. Thank goodness. So I can put a break point here and then I can just trigger it again. So we'll look at the family photo again. There we go. Right. So now we can see what's in game audio log. So game, there it is. Open that up. Audio logs here. Uh, I'm going to switch to the coding view so you can see. Uh, nope, coding log's not good. Um, don't know which one's going to give you a, a good zoom in on that bit. Nope, I haven't got really got a good zoom on it, so you'll have to look at it from there. So we're going to open the audio log. We're going to go into the dictionary. You can see we've got uh, one entry into it. Living area, narrator, and nair. I've. So what's happening here? is it's not adding new entries into the array. It's saving the same stuff into the array because I've done it wrong. We want to be going like that and appending the array. I don't think actually that's the, I think it, you have to use a, an append function. Uh, Godot, append array. I'll know this stuff off the top of my head once I've used it a bit more. Uh, is that the question? That is the question. Du, 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 append, yeah. So it's uh, dot append. Ooh, doggy is well and truly asleep on my on my laptop, uh, on my keyboard. All right, that should do it. So now, if I play that, it's going to pause a few times. I'm just going to continue. Going to read the family photo. It's going to pause again. Going to continue. Read the magazine. Pause and continue. Read the magazine again. Pause and continue. Enter the lift. Pause and continue. Uh, go to floor two. Exit into R&D. Pauses. And now at this point, I've got quite a bit of dialogue that's printed out. I'm going to turn down the lift. Oh, my goodness. One narrator and one main protagonist. Yeah, if you think that would work. I'm not sure if it would. It might be a bit weird. It's kind of like uh, old school, isn't it? When it's like, uh, I don't know what the name of the character is, but uh, the character walked into the lift. Hmm, I'm in the lift. <laughs> I, d I don't know how that sort of dialogue would work. It, would, it might, might just be a bit weird and old school, but you've got the option. That's the main thing. So when you're creating the script, you can do it any way you want. So now let's look at the game object into the audio log. Yes, we've got six entries in here. So we've got, uh, in the floor, lift floor one, the narrator said, 
I entered the elevator. And in the living area, the narrator said, nah, I've already read it. So it is storing to the audio log. The trouble is, it's always storing to the, uh, the audio log because we never check yet whether save to log is true or false. We don't care. So now all we need to do is say, if save to log equals true, then save it. There we go. That audio log is complete. So the only thing we need to do now, apart from turning that lift music off, is we need to create some mechanism for uh, displaying this in the game. So we can have a button, press the button, it opens up the dialogue, and you can scroll up and down it and look at all the messages, and we'll make it look pretty. But the technical side of that is done. That was super easy. And I think we can cross that off our list and cross this whole section off our list. This is what we've achieved today. We've done all that. And, and play an error to da, 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 audio log. Yep. So that's done. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a subtask to that. Cross that one out. And we need to introduce um, GUI to view, uh, and I'm going to put it in here, game.audio log. Super. All right. Well, uh, that's us for tonight. Thanks for coming and saying hello, Steph. Looking forward to our next catch-up. Hope you like the new branding and the awesome airlock that opens and closes. We're going to look at making this. Uh, what I'd like to do is is style the stream uh, more sci-fi, more focused on whatever our story is going to be. Develop the stream alongside the sort of brand that the game is going to have. Um, and uh, what I'd also like to do is just for those that are interested in more in the coding and how this all works, uh, is start um, looking at some learning objectives each week that we can uh, try and achieve. Um, and keeping track of it within the screen here. So um, I've got a few things planned. And uh, I'm just saying hi, hi. I think the the word is bye. So thanks, Steph, for coming in. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a lovely evening. I'm going to check this in. I'm going to go to bed. It's Friday tomorrow. We'll be back at 9 p.m. BST. Hope you can join us. And uh, thanks again.